So far, we've, um, we've seen the essentials of uh, Minkowski geometry, and in the last few videos, the essentials of, of what we could call relativistic kinematics, just the description of, of velocities and positions and time and where things go. Um, but that doesn't predict things, and that's where dynamics comes in. And so dynamics is when you actually throw things together and you have some ability to predict what's going to happen from that. So here's uh, what we need for, the dy for dynamics. Okay? There's just two very important assumptions. So one is that um, to every object, we associate, let's say uh, the object has a name A. We associate a vector, we're going to call it P sub A, or just P if we don't need the subscript. And it's tangent to the world line of the particle uh, and future pointing. And its name is called the energy momentum vector for that particle. Now, often in the in you know the standard references for this, you'd see a four vector here to emphasize that it's a space-time vector. But everything I'm doing is in space-time, pretty much. Um, all the vectors that we're dealing with are in space-time, and so. The four is not in incredibly necessary. And of course, for us, my picture is usually in two dimensions anyway, so it would be very confusing. Okay. So one thing is that I haven't told you anything about the, the length, the magnitude of P. I've said that it has to be pointing in the direction of the world line of the particle. The magnitude will be a very interesting quantity, but I want to save that for a second. Okay. So this is extremely suggestive, of course, to call it the energy dash momentum four vector. It's already suggesting a very nice, important thing about relativity is that energy and momentum are intimately linked and in sort of one, ma one quantity in exactly the way that time and space are linked. Okay. And so that's just, that really doesn't have a lot of content yet. We're just going to associate this uh, vector. We're not sure what it's doing. And, but the th number two is going to be very simple as well, but already it gives us some consequences. And it says that in a collision, we're really going to kind of look at sort of billiard ball dynamics here just of particles moving in free space and then colliding. Uh, in a collision, the uh, total energy momentum is conserved. OK, so let me show you a picture of this. Here's Minkowski space. Here's a couple of null lines to get us oriented. And we have two particles, A and B that come in, and then right at, at the center here is an event, a collision event, and then they stick together and produce a particle C. So it, this is what in Newtonian mechanics would be a purely inelastic collision, although it's very going to be very interesting that that kind of distinction is, is really rather different in relativity. So particles A and B come in and produce particle C. That's the kinematic picture. And then the new part of the picture is that there's going to be a vector PA that I'm drawing to be parallel with this guy, and a vector PB, which I'm, well, let's see. I'm trying to draw, actually, let me redraw a little bit. This is supposed to be parallel in the same direction as this guy. And then the B vector is like this. I'm going to make it look a bit longer here because I want the sum to end up going a bit to the left. And so the conservation law is that the sum of the momenta in the four momenta, or the energy momentum vectors, is the total momentum of this one particle going out. Just because they stuck together and there's only one outcome. There's going to be more complicated relationships if there's like three input particles and two output particles. Okay, That is um, an incredibly powerful relationship, even though it looks very simple, um, that the energy momentum is conserved. Okay, so let's draw, uh, always when we draw these, when we think about dynamics, we want to have these two pictures. We could try to combine them, but I, f I find that it's easier to have the two separate pictures. So, for example, um, we could have, let me give it more space here. We could have a picture where um, two 
material particles A and B collide and bounce off each other, but they come out with maybe rather different velocities. Maybe, maybe this is A prime coming out, and this is B prime. And so we would have something like um, here's P A, and here's P B, and then a kind of a different way of summing to the same vector, p a prime, p b prime, and that the, the vector sum of the incoming momenta is the vector sum of the outcoming momenta. And I, when I say momenta, I mean energy momentum, the real space-time vector. Okay, And we're going to have to see how this relates to ordinary concepts of energy and momentum in a minute. But I'm kind of trying to just put this out there as a, uh, sort of an axiom and see where it leads, because it's so elegant and simple. Um, another picture would be. Um, Let's say, let's use a photon. How about two material particles come in, and annihilate each other. This is a very common thing, and resulting in, let's say, two photons coming out. And those are often called gamma. Let's call them gamma 1 and gamma 2. And so then we would have um, PA and PB. And then we're going to have things that are along null lines. This is P, oops, I put the arrow in the wrong place. P gamma 1, P gamma 2. Okay? And the, the but special about that these about that is that these are null lines. Okay? So there's a lot of different pictures we could draw here. Here's one consequence we can get just from this extremely simple setup, and then I'm gonna stop this video. Um, can we have two material particles collide, A and B, and just annihilate and result in a single photon? Gamma. Oh, I shouldn't use gamma here because I was just using gamma in the previous video or something else. Okay. Well, let's call it uh, let's call it C. Okay. But it's a photon. Okay. Let's think about that. We want to have two vectors that are future time like. Uh, this was A. Sorry. And I need the sum of them to be a, a null vector. But if you look at the geometry of the the cone here, that's not going to make any sense. If you add together two vectors that are future time-like, their sum can't be tilted over as much as a null vector is. It's a, very, it's a pretty easy thing to prove about from our definitions, and it should be intuitive from the picture, that if you have two things that are not slanted too much from the vertical, they're time-like, their sum is also going to be not very slanted. So that would be our PC. It cannot be null. So already, there's an interesting consequence that you can't have two material particles come together and annihilate into one photon. They have to annihilate into at least two photons, which is a very common thing. But it's not obvious um, from, unless you know about this interpretation of energy and momentum. We're going to put coordinates on this and get really down to cases and compare it to Newtonian ideas uh, in the next couple of videos.